Travelers. But right now, Craig Lineauer, Inland Marine, corporate claims over at Travelers. Craig, good to have you back on the show. And this really kind of ties in nicely with what I did last week with uh, Overhaul about this drastic rise in cargo theft. And uh, some of the commodities we'll talk about today is going to be covered in that. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be here again. It's nice to see you. Yeah, so today we're talking, we're going to get a primer on some of the more challenging commodities that trucks have to haul. Set the table here. Yeah, so certain commodities, though lucrative to haul, can be challenging for sure, for a lot of reasons. Well, like what are those reasons? What, may, what makes it challenging? Yeah, so when we talk about, um, you know, challenging commodities, we really put them into two categories. You know, there's sort of everyday things that you probably don't think are challenging. And then there's high exposure things that you probably already know are, are going to be challenging. So we'll talk about, you know, a few of the everyday things first. So, you know, produce, for example, and, you know, this is stuff like lettuce and bananas. Uh, this can be landmine. So you've probably heard about the challenges that, you know, bananas present because, they have to be transported between 56 and 60 degrees or they're going to be rejected, right? So to, to really successfully, you know, haul produce, you're going to need a few things going for you. You're going to have to have good equipment. Uh, you're going to have to have staff that's trained to, main, you know, on using the equipment and to maintain it. And then as we've talked about before, you're going to have to load the trailer correctly to make sure there's enough airflow, you know, over and around, you know, for the return air uh, to happen. Or you're going to have to pre-cool the trailer. So... So basically, you know, inexperience here in this space is going to lead to loss or damage. So insurance, of course, uh, covers breakdowns, but, you know, insurance covers the accidental and the unexpected. It, it really doesn't cover user error. So you really have to have, you know, you, your staff up to speed. Uh, and then also in the everyday space, we can talk about auto parts. And you might ask, you know, hey, you know, what's challenging about auto parts? But what's challenging about auto parts is that the manufacturer usually has discretion contractually because of fear of latent defect to reject the load. So you might, ex you might not expect, for example, engines or transmissions, which are very you know, substantial uh, auto parts to get e easily damaged during transportation. Um, they're very, like, like I said, robust uh, and substantial, but even a minor road incident or a hard braking uh, can trigger this fear of latent defect that'll get the shipment rejected. Yeah. Hey, look, produce makes sense. Um, I, I've dealt with produce on the operations side. You have not only spoilage, there can be damage, there can be, it's a theft commodity that people go after. But, you know, you said something interesting. You said auto parts. How about automobiles th themselves, like the, the auto haulers we see? Yeah, absolutely. New cars, right? So th this is challenging because, you know, we all know that as soon as a new vehicle leaves the lot, it becomes old, right? And it depreciates usually on the average, you know, six to $9,000, I think is what a depreciation is for a car as soon as it's not deemed to be new anymore. And so just like with auto parts, you have this, you can have very little discretion over the scope of damages and the car manufacturer can call the automobile, the new automobile a total loss just because it's some minor damage. So, and then even in the event that it's deemed repairable, you're gonna have to pay for the cost of repair plus the diminution in value. So. And then, I, you know, in, in terms of the everyday stuff, I should talk about food, right? And transporting any, any discussion of food entails discussing the difference between fear of loss mm -hmm. and actual loss. And so, you know, if a food shipment is sealed, which they often are, uh, and the seal is broken, this can indicate that the food's been tampered with, right? And this can create this fear of loss. Um, but the fear of loss means that the shipment might have been contaminated. But the problem becomes is that you have to legally show a change in the condition of the food for there to actually be contamination. So many times you're gonna have a contract, right? And that contract will make you liable, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be covered by insurance because insurance covers you for actual loss only, but not a fear of loss. So you see a lot of this in the, in the food space and that can make it challenging. Okay, wait, so hold on. So the most everyday items are the most challenging? Great. What about like things with exceptions? What about the like the ones that we would consider challenging? Yeah, well, I'm not even gonna touch on something that you mentioned here a moment ago, which is lithium ion batteries, right? We all know and, and are aware of the dangers there. And I think we've, sp I, I may have spoken on this before and it sounds like you may have an upcoming uh, segment on that. So I, I'll, I'll skip that one, but there's some other stuff that's worth talking about, right? Uh, specifically pharmaceuticals, I think electronics, and believe it or not, uh, seafood, I think is, is worthy to consider here. Yeah. And so, so let me talk about farm, far, let me talk about farm, I'm sorry. Let me talk about pharma first. 
So, so pharma is temperature controlled, right? So it's going to be just like produce. And this is, this is stuff like vaccines and antibiotics. And these can really be big losses for you as a carrier, right? This can be a million dollar loss. So you really have to make sure that you have adequate insurance to cover this stuff. And unlike damage to cars and, you know, that we just talked about, you may not be able to see a damage to, to, a, to an antibiotic, right? Or to a vaccine. So, so really to protect yourself from claims, what you have to do is you're going to have to show temperature was adequately maintained and that the cargo remained in the proper chain of custody, right? So um, you're going to need, just like with food and, and produce, you're going to need an experienced team of drivers. You're going to need seal integrity uh, and your equipment has to be well maintained. And in the event, you know, the unfortunate event that you wind up in litigation related to uh, to a pharma shipment, then it's it's the care, custody, and control that's going to win the day for you. Ooh, and how about electronics and seafood? There's actually been a number of stories. There's actually one that was even published today about seafood theft, especially in the Northeast. There's a lot of that happening right now. Philadelphia area, I've been hearing a lot about it. What's the challenges, though, with electronics and the seafood? Yeah, so I'll talk about seafood first, right? So the thing about seafood that that that, uh, that can sneak up on you is you have to remember that the price per pound can be like twenty dollars compared to beef or chicken, right? Which is maybe two to three dollars a pound. So you really need to pay attention to temperature control, seal integrity, and make sure that you have an experienced team. And then you also need to check your insurance limits because you have to make sure you have adequate coverage in the event that you have a loss. And believe it or not. Some of these losses, you know, that I've seen, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars may not be enough to cover you for a trailer full full of, for example, lobster. Okay, so it's very very expensive stuff. Um, and then, you know, in terms of electronics, uh, you know, talking about things that have circuitry in it, in them, so computer servers, CPU towers, stuff like that. Um, it's going to be critical that these are loaded the right way. And uh, why is that? Because these are exposed just to normal vibration and shaking. Uh, in the course of transit. And when that happens, the circuitry can come loose and there can be big losses if you don't handle these the right way. So you may be required to use an air ride trailer or also tip and tell stickers or shock watches on the shipment. Um, and these, of course, let the receiver know at delivery if the shipment was exposed to some kind of rough handling. Um, but this can also you know, result in rejection uh, when triggered. So that, that, may, that can be challenging as well. Any advice for shippers and, and brokers to get ahead of this on what we've been talking about? Yeah, you know, foremost is to understand your exposure, um, know about the cargo that's being hauled. And, um, and then secondly is to make sure your equipment is well maintained and that your team is well trained. Uh, and then, you know, it goes without saying you should understand uh, the insurance that you have, make sure you have adequate limits. Uh, and then if, if you can and you're, you're a carrier, uh, you should think about limiting your liability contractually, right? You know, release rate valuation, that kind of thing. Um, because without, uh, you know, re uh, limiting liability, you can easily get hit for a monster amount. Uh, and if you don't have enough insurance, then you're going to be in it for the Delta. Craig, hey, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for shining a light on how these everyday products can be just as tough as the one with exceptions. Everybody be safe out there. Go check out travelers.com. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. All right, take it easy. By the way, 